during the week, there's just part I was going back and thinking in my book, in my from memories that in my past, and while I was in the city of Canberra, so I kind of had a little bit of a rough patch during the week, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's not relevant for this part. But Tucky gave me a book to read. One that was called, was it, um, stop and take me on it. Honesty and Integrity. Honesty and Integrity. Mm -hmm. So I read this book, and as I'm reading, I'm thinking, I'll give you a bit of the backstory first, and then I'll go to why I had the thoughts. When I was living with mum and dad before they got divorced, I was roughly about maybe 10, 12 years old. The night I came home from school, and as all normal, I thought about maybe just after dinner. Oh, I heard I was in my room. My sister was in the room next to me. And all we heard was a lot of shouting coming from both mum and dad. At the time, I didn't know what it was. I had no idea. All I thought was our names were mentioned, they were yelling. And as this was happening, I said to my sister, we need to go outside. And as I was about to go outside, dad goes, you two, outside now. Now, this is the first time I'd actually done something where almost, I had almost broken something really major, as far as I can remember. I walked out the back door onto our pagoda, which was the sliding door, or the glass sliding door. As I walked out, I grabbed the door and I literally slammed it like that. And I nearly shattered the door by doing it. I was extremely, I don't know, I can guess I call it angry because I didn't know what was going on. I was frustrated, I was slightly annoyed. But all I heard was arguing. Now, I'm one of those people in a, in a way I don't like loud noises. I hate being in crowds. And that's probably got partly to do with this. Now, a bit later, I'd actually, I found out later that, that I had nothing to do with that incident. About two weeks later, mum and dad got divorced and I found out why. My mum had been seeing my dad's best friend behind her back. And, and, and I, for a long time, I didn't talk to my father. Because mum had always told me it was his fault, not hers. I later found out from dad that it had nothing to do with him. He was in the rap working, he'd gone away. Um, he'd come back to a to a post and found out what was going on. Dad moved out. I got stuck at home with mum. I wasn't very depressed about it. I asked mum, could I go and see dad? Her answer was plainly no. You are not going to see your father. He is not trustworthy. Everything to turn it around against him. I was, let's say pissed off. It would be about the right word for it. But not only that, as growing up, the reason I think I realised why I, so when I get frustrated, I throw things. Now I'm trying to limit how much I do that and I'm getting better at it. But as the saying goes, now I'm perfect. When I was growing up, that father died before I knew him. I never knew my father. And dad always, when I got the trouble from dad, I was always getting by dad. Because he didn't know how to deal with me. I was a downright little came the bar to the truest sense of the word. I'd go around, I'd throw things, I'd, I'd chase the dog, needlessly around the yard and I where the hell out of it. So when the phrase literally come to, when I'm in trouble, I'm in the doghouse, I literally was when I was in trouble. I was in the doghouse. 
with the dog. So you just like me. Cool. Now, that was before the divorce happened. After it happened, maybe about seven years later, I was living in Rankin Park. I had gone to see my grandparents, mum's granny, mum's parents, my granny and granddad, who I got on very well with. My granny and walked, she taught me how to cook a lot of stuff. Granddad taught me how to fish. We went to a local market one day. And granddad, I think granddad gave me about 10, 20 dollars that day and said, spend them whatever you like. I found a CD that dad told me about. I thought, sure, I'll get that. And it was a comedian by name Wes Harrison. And it was called You Won't Believe Your Ears. That's another sort of place. The other thing I bought for $10 was the pocket knife. First one I'd ever owned. Mum had fair warned me. You can have it, but you're not to do anything with it unless you actually need to use it to cut something more than anything with it. Yeah, probably a big mistake by mine. I came home that afternoon, maybe about when school went back. We got home, my sister was annoying the hell out of me, pissing me off. I told her, I gave her fair warning. Leave you alone, or this knife is going to eat you. I, I, I was too threatened that. Mum grabbed a hammer, the knife out, so I just smashed the pieces in front of her. Which only made me more pissed off at Now, jumping ahead to what happened a couple of weeks ago, because the rest of them is pretty good here. Tell me, when I read that book, I thought about all this stuff I'd done and how much anger I had to stop at some point and how frustrated I got and everything like this. Now, the fact that I had, in a way, been sabotaging myself in relationships is how I worked it out. I wasn't too proud of myself and I realised I had to stop doing it. I literally have to. The communication between this incident and everything that happened, I am now trying to fix. So if you get the opportunity to communicate something you don't, you've wasted an opportunity. Take every chance you can to communicate something that may be the last time you get. So to wrap it up, I have recently tried to Stop throwing things, stop getting annoyed, stop getting angry, and stop sabotaging myself when it comes to my relationship with people. Because one day I may lose one. The one I care about the most. And everyone knows that is in the room. <laughs> so back to you, Mount Tasman. Thank you, Ben.